Happy Palm Sunday, Facebook peeps. Well, I apologize for my tardiness. I was, I guess I was having an issue with my internet connection here at the house. And of course it happened right <laughs> when we were getting ready for church. So I'm gonna adjust my phone a little bit here. I think that makes us a little bit more. Okay, I see somebody's here, good. Um, I'll just give it a moment. Um, we have several texts today that we're going to be looking at, and if you'd like to look at them while we are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as we go along, um, I thought I'd share them with you. We'll be doing the Liturgy of the Palms, and that gospel text is from Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Uh, then we'll be doing, I'll just give you them in order of how we're going to, to do them. Uh, Psalm 31, uh, verses 9 through 16 is on page 623 in the Book of Common Prayer. I'll point you to that when we get there. Uh, the Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a, the first half of that verse. Then we'll do Canticle 4, which is on page 50. I'll direct you there at the time. Uh, then the second, uh, the New Testament reading is from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. We'll then do Canticle 14, which is on page 90 in the Book of Common Prayer. And then, um, as is our custom on Palm Sunday, um, the Gospel reading um, is, a, is a quite a, an extensive text. Uh, this year it's from Matthew, year A, Matthew 26, verse 14 through chapter 27, 66. So we do a good chunk of 26 and all of chapter 27. Uh, <clears throat> so I wanted to say something about Palm Sunday and palms. We are used to having palms that we wave, that we hand out, and that's not happening this year. And a, a, fr a college friend of mine posted this, um, or maybe it was, I know a couple missies, but at any rate, um, this was just in a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It was a little um, outline of a palm frond or branch as they're called. So I colored it in with my markers, different shades of green, and I cut it out. I had a little cardboard on the back so I could wave it around today. But you know, when, the, um, when Jesus had his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, um, he, and everybody put those palm branches down on the ground for him to walk over when he was riding on the donkey, um, they just grabbed branches from the trees that were around them. So you have branches, maybe you have branches um, near trees, trees near where you live. In my yard, I have kind of, it's a cedar type tree. Um, and so I just went today and I, I snipped off a branch. Um, and so when we get to the part where we normally would have been processing, I'm going to, I'm going to wave both of these. Um, just as a way to um, participate in that, just as the Jews did back so many years ago. So, um, we have a lot going on today, which is going to be really great. So, if you would turn to page 270 in your Book of Common Prayer, if you have one. Uh, this is the Palm Sunday Liturgy. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts 
whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now I'm going to read the uh, passage from Matthew chapter 21. Verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had directed them, they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here endeth the reading. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches, oh, so if you have a branch, let these branches be for us signs of this victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. So now what's going to happen is we have great imagination. God gave us wonderful imagination. And so... Uh, because I want you to be able to see me, I'm going to stay seated during our procession. So if you have a palm branch or um, an imaginary palm branch, uh, what we're going to do is sing this phrase over a, a few times. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to sing that three times. I figure the Trinity, three is a great number. Um, and then on, after we sing it three times, and you can parade around because you can hear me. I don't, I can't see you. So, you know, parade around your room. Uh, then after we sing it three times, then we'll say this prayer and then we'll sing it three more times. So you'll have a chance to parade all around if you want. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. 
All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. All glory, Lord, and honor To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. It was fun. Thanks for joining me. Now we're going to do what we've done a couple times before, which is we're going to put our hand in one place and hold it and go to another. So if you would turn in your prayer book, uh, we're done with this section. Turn to page 46, 46. And you're going to put your hand there. And then you're going to go to page 623. Page 623. So we're doing Psalm 31. We're starting at verse 9, which is the second one from the top. And then we're going down to the to verse 16, so we won't do the last one. And then we'll do the Gloria, which is found at the bottom of page 46. Let us say Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16 together. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me, they plot to save my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now if you turn to page 50, five zero, please. Let us say together Canticle 4. 
the Song of Zechariah, also known as the Benedictus Dominus Deus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the land of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to get, guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So guess what? I forgot to do the first reading before that canticle. So I'm going to do two readings in a row. Um, I'm glad you're forgiving and that you love me. <laughs> oh my gosh. When there's a lot of things going on, these things happen. So um, a reading from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. <laughs> Thanks for the love. Uh, <clears throat> the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare, oh, it is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Here endeth the reading. So now you understand um, Canticle 4, that makes a little bit more sense, that it's in response to that passage that we just heard. Uh, so now I'll do the second reading from Philippians. Chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. This is Paul uh, speaking to the church in Philippi. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here endeth the reading. 
Now if you would turn to page 90, 9, 0. Uh, let us say together Canticle 14, A Song of Penitence, uh, also known as the Kyrie Pantocrator, some pa say Pantocrator. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array, all things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you, Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Now I'm going to do the third reading. This is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning at verse 14. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, 
which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <clears throat> While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way, at that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the, deser excuse me, then all the disciples deserted him and fled. 
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? We have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do, know, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was filled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. <coughs> now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. <clears throat> now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified! Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified! So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. <clears throat> As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. 
the bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion said, excuse me, now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was a dis also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Here endeth the reading. <clears throat> it's a lot to take in, isn't it? At the beginning of our time together, we joined with the multitudes shouting Hosanna to the king. A king very different from any other king they had encountered. A king, as it said in Isaiah, that would come humbly riding on a donkey, on a colt.
very different from a parade that happened at the same time on the other side of Jerusalem, coming in a different gate. One of great might and military and being raised up and carried above everyone else. I thought it might be of interest and helpful for you to get a sense of um, the space of what that must have been like. Um, I have some books with some excellent pictures of Jerusalem, old Jerusalem, um, and Jerusalem. So it's a it's a panoramic view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just excuse me, you know, put the book in front of you so that you can scan it. You'll notice that it's very long. So this is the side of Old Jerusalem that, um, I'll be careful not to catch myself on fire. Um, so you see here, this, this here is, is a wall. So it's a walled city, and it goes all the way along here. So just um, see if you can what that's like. Oops. And I want to show you something right here in the middle of this is a gate that is, is now all sealed up. It's called the Golden Gate. This is the gate that Jesus walked through um, on the donkey. That's where he entered. So right in front of this is the Kidron Valley, and on the other side is the Mount of Olives. So if you were on the Mount of Olives, this is the view that you would see. So Jesus, when he walked, went down the Kidron Valley and up at the end of his life, the, that last day. Um, but then they came back down, and so they, were, they had prayed up there. So I have another picture that's really good. And this is, this is the, um, the Golden Gate up close and personal. So you see, I'm not sure if you can tell how big it is. It's really, the gates are huge. Um, and in fact, um, I have another picture in this other book that I was just in I wanted to show you of some of the other gates. Um, so these are other gates um, in, the, in, in Old Jerusalem. Um, this one right here is called the Damascus Gate. It was taken at night, so you've got, it's got these lights. But this is the gate that a lot, a lot of people go through every day to get to the... Uh, it's a primary gate where people go in um, to go to the shops. Um, and so you can see how this right here, this arch, and how little the people look. Um, and in in this other close-up view. You know, that, that piece right here, this little teeny doorway, you know, would be dwarfing any human being. So I just thought that might be helpful to get a perspective um, of how big Old Jerusalem is and um, you know what it what it must have been like a little bit. Um, so a lot of people could fit in there, and um, it must have been great a great wonder and and joyful. Um, and then something shifted. Right, something shifted. Um, everything was going really well, and then somehow 
an element of fear was in, introduced. And then it was all about killing the one who was threatening to take away the power of those who were in power, and particularly the Jewish religious leaders. It, it's not, Jesus was not against the Jews. He was a Jew. Um, but what he didn't like was, he didn't like that the religious leaders, some of them, uh, were taking advantage of their their position and their power, and they were lording it over others and uh, causing some to be oppressed because of that. Um, and because they were in power, you know, it was a political statement, frankly, for Jesus to come in that big uh, procession um, claiming that he was God's king or the others were doing that. Um, but, the, but the Jews were also looking for a king who was going to fight with an army. But we heard in one of the passages today, um, when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Um, I think that was, uh, right, that was in the Matthew passage, uh, 26 and 27, when um, he was arrested and one of his disciples cut the ear off of the, the slave. Um, and so Jesus is a different kind of a king. He's one of peace and sacrifice. And he knew what it was like to be alone. When he was on the mountain praying, when he was on the other side of the Kidron Valley from Israel, from Jerusalem, and he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, he was all alone. The guys didn't get it. God bless them. Uh, they couldn't stay awake even for an hour while Jesus went and prayed. No one has ever been so isolated and lonely as that. If you are feeling isolated and lonely in your home, Jesus gets it. Jesus understands thoroughly and completely understands and he is with you and he's loving you beyond measure and he's walking with you in your fear and in your and in your joys and whatever you're experiencing um, he's with you and he's experiencing all that you're experiencing and he's loving you beyond measure which is why he did all this. And isn't that remarkable and amazing that the God who created us in this, through the power of the Spirit with Jesus, um, gives us in the Trinity different ways to experience God and God's amazing, abundant, crazy love for us. Um, so as we traverse Holy Week together and apart, um, may we remember just how lonely and isolated Jesus was and that that was not the end of the story. That Jesus went through a lot of suffering and he went through death, but that was not the end. 
but in the midst of it, it felt like the end. So let us remember that uh, as we walk this Holy Week together. So now, if you would turn to page 54. I get a little weepy when I... Um, when I think about how much Jesus loves us and how much we are loved beyond measure. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, let us do suffrages be. The R is the response to the versicle, um, and I will um, say that all of the parts so that those who don't have prayer books can uh, hear all the words. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. So now if you will turn the page. Um, and put your hand there on page 56. Uh, and then um, I think I skipped another prayer, so we're going to say it now, the Collect of the Day. Um, if you would turn to page 168. Oh, I'd invite you to say this with me. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind hast sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to pay, take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Oh, I guess I did that right. So now back to page 56. A collect for Sundays. You may join me if you'd like. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So once again, if you go turn the page, um, we're going to do some of the additional prayers, um, uh, authorized intercessions and thanksgivings. So if you would like to uh, hold your hand there and then turn to page 328 at the bottom. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplication and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Archbishop of Canterbury Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, President of the House of Deputies Gay, Episcopal Bishops in Michigan and the Dominican Republic, Wayne, Bonnie, Rayford, and Moises, ELCA Bishop Craig, and our Standing Committee and Diocesan Council, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. We pray for and ask your blessing on all those in our dioceses discerning calls to ministry, both lay and ordained. In particular, we pray for those preparing for the sacred order of priests, including Del, Rada, Derek, Eileen, Philip, Wendy, Paul, Tom, and Harold and for those preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Jim, Michael, Elizabeth, Wendy, and Trish. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially President Donald, Governor Gretchen, Mayor Kathleen, and our various local officials that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those on our prayer list. Rod, Ted and Maureen, Patty, Argie, Bianca, Jane, Salvatore, Sue and David, Patty, David, Debbie, Bob and Joyce, Carol, Randall, Elise, Leona, Mackenzie K, Calum, Brett, Perry, Bobby, James and Noah, Jeremiah, Kendall, Brittany, Brittany, D, Gary and family, Amber and family, John, Lily, Becky, Lauren. Barry, Carrie, Stephen, Melissa, Joshua, Dolores, 
Jennifer, Mike, Bobby, Sarah, Brad, Darlene, Jean, Doug, Joyce, John Lynn, Deborah, Jack, Brad, Nan, Tim, Devon, and Cole, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray especially for all those affected by COVID-19, for those infected, especially Tish and Baby Meadow, for those whose work exposes them to the virus, especially Rachel, Michelle, Pam, Don, Mike, Kyleen, and Sarah. For those who are treating and caring for the ill, for all who are hungry, for those who have lost their jobs, for those living alone, lonely, afraid, and struggling with addiction, for those whose homes are not safe, and for those whose livelihood is interrupted. We ask your peace, which surpasses all understanding, to enter our hearts, homes, communities, state, country, and world. Remind us when we forget that your perfect love casts out fear and that our lives are in your hands, O God, and it is in your arms of love that all your whole world reside. We pray to thee, gracious God, for those in the Anglican and diocesan cycles of prayer. We pray for the diocese of Katsina and Kebi in Nigeria, for St. Paul's Do Doagiac and their rector Diane, and for Trinity West Branch and their priest in charge Brian that they may be encouraged in their lives and receive your provision of wisdom, mercy, and grace to bring about healing and reconciliation. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Virginia Mader, Bill McDonald, Barbara Steele, and Rick Steele beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now if you would turn back to page 59. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord. Oops, hang on. Before we do that, um, I'm adding something today. We haven't done the offertory because it just never occurred to me to do it. It's not in the rubrics of the morning prayer. But um, when we do the offertory, um, on when we're doing the Eucharistic service, we offer ourselves, our souls, our bodies, everything that we have to God. And that is also brought up with our gifts, our financial gifts, our tithing, our giving, our commitments, um, excuse me, our gifts of thanksgiving financially, and also in the bread and the wine of which we would have been about to partake. Uh, so I thought it might be lovely, um, just as a reminder um, of our offering, um, I just sent in my um, my tithe check uh, yesterday, put it in the mail. Um, but as we sing the doxology, which we're used to doing, um, let us uh, 
praise God for everything as we offer our life uh, to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you. Now let's do a prayer of St. Chrysostom. <laughs> Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. The Bishop of Eastern and Western Michigan uh, is leading uh, worship, a morning prayer at 1030 today, obviously during our time together. Uh, but what you may not know is that two of our teens from Trinity were a part of doing the passion narrative that we heard read but in a in a prayer-like fashion and so if you would like to see uh, Matt and Sam in their online debut uh, you can go to our diocesan uh, Facebook page which is Episcopal Diocese of Eastern Michigan and you can go in there and um, find out where in the service it is and, and check that out. I thought you might like to know that. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I will be back here tonight at nine o'clock for Compline and uh, continuing every night and um, Wednesday at 1130 for morning prayer. Thursday at 7 o'clock for Maundy Thursday, Friday, Good Friday at noon, um, and then next Sunday at 10 for Easter. God bless you. Thank you for joining me.